Well, great afternoon, everyone. Hey, Stephanie, I see you. Welcome, welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. I am so excited about our topic today. Um, our topic is going to be 10 tips to make your social media more professional so that you can attract prospects and clients. But before we get into that, um, do we have anything to celebrate? Has What have you done to move your business forward since the last time we got together? Anything that we can celebrate? Well, you can celebrate that I'm an Antigua and Barbados specialist. I finished that over the week. Congratulations. Now, how long did it take you to do those? It only took it only took me a while because I stressed it out. But if I add it all up, I I say it, it it probably took me about three hours. Okay, not bad, not bad. Any special perk with completing those? Um, no, not that I know of. Just not yet, it. not yet. <laughs> right. They usually will invite you to come, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, check it out. So that's good. So are you uh, marketing your travel agency as a Caribbean specialist? Is that why you're getting those certifications? Um, I actually was getting it for me because I always heard about Antigua and really didn't know anything about it. So um, when I saw the chance to, you know, educate myself more, and I said, oh, might as well. <laughs> so That's good. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So let's jump into how come so many of y'all are off camera? That's number one. I'm here. I'm on camera. Unless you sent me a message telling me that you were somewhere that, you know, was distracting. Y'all need to be. We had a whole Zoom about this. We did. Okay. So I need y'all to be on camera. I'm on camera. This is a Zoom. This is not a conference call. So y'all need to be on camera. Because one day you're going to have a team and you're going to want to have a team Zoom. And how you going to feel when your whole team is on off camera with a profile pic? You talking to some pictures. And y'all know I'm streaming this for YouTube. So I need everybody to be on camera. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's jump into this. 10 tips to make your social media more professional so that you can attract prospects and clients. This is so important. A lot of times when um, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coachings and people are struggling with their business and I go and look at their social media and that is a big, big reason why their business is not growing. Um, because when I go to their social media, I can't even tell that they have a business. So how are you going to attract business prospects or even travel clients if it doesn't even appear that you even have a, a, a travel business? So this is going to help you. So number one, define your target audience. Number one, define your target audience. Clearly identify your ideal target audience for your network marketing business and your travel business. Understand their needs, desires, and pain points to tailor your content accordingly. So for the marketing side, so you gotta, you gotta identify for your planet marketing business. Who, what type of person do you want on your, on your team? Are you targeting uh, couples, right? Husband and wives, because maybe you and your spouse are in the business. So you want to target them. Are you targeting single parents, right? Single mom, single dads. Are you targeting um, baby boomers? Are you targeting millennials? Are you targeting Generation Z? Are you targeting the travel enthusiasts? You know, what are you? Are you targeting event planners? Who is your target audience? And then you got to understand what what moves them what's what's their pain points, what are they looking for if you're targeting people that are self employed other independent contractors those 1099 workers 
Well, what's their pain point? Time debt. They're all in time debt. Because if they don't do what they do, they don't eat, right? When I say that 1099 person, I'm talking about let's maybe the hairstylist, right? What does retirement look like for a hairstylist? It doesn't. They don't have 401ks, do they? Right? So you're going to, if that's your target, then you want to talk about time freedom, right? You want to talk about being able to take time off and travel because how often do hairstylists take a vacation? They typically don't, right? Because if they stop doing hair, they don't eat, right? So it's about targeting, knowing who your target audience is and identifying their pain points and then targeting your content to meet their needs. Any questions about that? Defining your target audience. Anybody here have a target audience? Nobody? Rochelle, who's your target? <laughs> Rochelle? Mm-hmm. The college graduates, like okay. stuck, they're stuck in a situation. Okay, that's yeah. good. I have one. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm looking towards um, empty nesters. Good. The kids going to college and, you know, they want to take a trip or something like that. Yeah, they got to rediscover who they are now that they're not parents with kids in the house. That's a, that is a great target audience. Karen? I guess I probably really need, had not thought about a target audience for marketing, but my, and I need to, but my target audience for travel has lately just been groups, church groups, because mm-hmm. I'm in the ministry and I'm around a lot of churches and I talk to them about having uh, church groups for fundraiser for the 501C. So that's nice. usually my target audience. Okay, good. Anybody else? This is Cherise. Um, In a way, my target audience is uh, for any households that's really just surviving that want to move from surviving to thriving. And uh, sometimes me and my husband go back and forth whether should we represent individually or collective. So that part I have not really mastered yet because, you know, I got it. We both in the business. So. Right, right. Okay, that's good. Miss Delta? I have something to say. Hold on one second, Christina. Delta? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. I was having a time. But no, I guess my target audience would be people who are tired tired of their job, tired of working in, in, in whatever industry or job that they have. It would, that would be my target audience who, who I would you know gear towards. Okay. Um, Shamika and then Christina. My target is single moms who want to be at home with their kids more and show them more. I love it. I love it. Christina? Well, I've been snooping on Facebook and, and social medias, and I've been watching people's comments and their posts of their days of how they feel. And I've been targeting people that are saying that they're tired of their party lifestyle and all they want to do is just travel and make more money. And I've been seeing a lot of people posting that type of comment. So I've been using that as a gateway to go ahead and like introduce them, see if they were available for a live travel Zoom. And also in my travel business, I take care of senior citizens for a living mm-hmm. on the side. Well, I'm trying to make travel my living and the marketing my living. But right now I'm taking care of senior citizens. And um, a lot of them live in communities that are 50 and older. And they have newsletters that go out every month. So I'm trying to master the cruise line type of department so I could go ahead and book a big trip for all these 50 to 70 year old people that got a lot of money saved up and that have no time to have all this free time so we could get them going and live life and and just, you know, have a big group of at least more than 50 or 150 people because these communities consist of at least 400 people. Yes, yes, that's a good one. I I love the way you're thinking outside of the box, Christina. That's good. All right, let's go to number two. Optimize your profile. Optimize your profile. 
ensure your social media profiles, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is that you're on, reflect professionalism and showcase your expertise in business development and the travel industry. Use a high quality profile picture, include a concise bio and provide contact information. Oh my gosh, so many of you, you have zero contact information in your bio. And you're wondering why people aren't reaching out. Go check your profile right now. Y'all go on your, your Facebook right now. Do you have contact information? I have a question about that. I've always been skeptical about giving my phone number, but I know some people just feel more comfortable calling you directly. But since my profile is public, I don't want just like weirdos calling me because I am a family woman and married. So how do you feel about providing your phone number? Get a Google voice number and that's the number that you use. And if somebody calls you that you don't like, you use the block feature. But if you're doing business, you can't be afraid to give out a phone number. There are way too many scam accounts on social media. So how are people going to know that you're a legitimate business owner if you don't have a phone number? Would you do business with somebody who doesn't have a phone number? That says, oh, just reach out to me through Messenger. Be honest, can somebody answer that question? If someone approached you about business, they don't have a phone number in their profile and they just say, oh, call me through Messenger. Would you trust them? Yes or no? Just type it in the chat. Thank you, Tangela. Thank you, Kim. Exactly. You got to put yourself on the side of the person you're trying to attract. You wouldn't do business with someone that's not showing that they have a business phone number. So why would you not have a business phone number? Google Voice is free. And just like with email, how many of you get a ton of spam emails and your blocked email list is probably longer than your contact list? We got, it's, it's 2023, we got block features and unsubscribe. So you should be providing a business phone number and, and an email address in your profile for all of your social media so people will take you seriously that you have a business. Miss Karen? Okay, I have a question. So I checked my email, like I mean, the Facebook, like you said. So it's not in my bio, but it's in my, my phone number is in my about. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So yeah, what, that, that should section. I put it in the bio? Because what if people just don't go that extra step no, to do the bio? No, that's fine. If they're on Facebook, they know to they know to they know to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, in the information that's about you, that section, the bio, whatever, you got to have a business number, business number, phone number. Um, as an IntelliTravel travel advisor, you should have your IntelliTravel website in there. Right. As a planet marketing rep, you can have your planet marketing link to your website, your planet website in there. But you got to separate yourself from the spam accounts. Some of you, your your bios don't even tell me that you're an IntelliTravel travel advisor or a planet marketing rep. What's up with that? Anybody want I, to come? Go ahead. I, I have I have to um I'm sorry, this is Ortasia. Hey. But I have to update mine because I have a group. I have a Facebook group, so all of my information, contact, and everything is in the group. It didn't even dawn on me to put it in the actual profile. Yeah, <laughs> because Ortasia, only the there's only a limited amount of people in your group. So what about the rest right. of the Facebook world? That's the point. <laughs> right? The other, what is it? 70 billion people, million people, whatever. Right? Now, granted, when Planet Marketing was brand new, 
one year old, two year old, three year old. I was not putting anywhere in my bio Planet Marketing because I wanted people to reach out to me to find out what business opportunity am I talking about. Plus, we didn't have a lot of documentation. Now, psst, the documentation that we have is lit. We got three millionaires. We got like, what, over 90 people wearing presidential rings, right? Our millionaires are making over $100,000 a month. I forget the figure, Mr. Mr. Bradley has paid out, what is it, 160 million in commissions. And Teletravel this year will would have booked a billion in travel just for this year alone. So the documentation that both company has is something that will set you aside from all the other companies. That's why one of the hashtags for IntelliTravel is what competition? What competition? We ain't got no competition. What other host agency has 95,000 uh, active agents? None, <laughs> right? So that sets you aside. And in fact, recently I was on the phone doing a three-way call and the prospect used to work for one of our travel suppliers. She no longer works for them. And so she's looking for a host agency. And she says for the last year, she's been researching different host agencies. So she has a very, very unique perspective. And so the questions that she was asking about in teletravel were totally different than your average prospect because she used to actually work for one of the travel suppliers you know, getting a travel insurance for the client, putting the trips together and stuff like that. But I was able to spit out our qualifications with IntelliTravel, put us right at the top of her list. So we went from being a part of a group of however many she's been researching over the last year, but because I knew the facts and had the, 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 the receipts to say why, we, why there's no competition with us, we're at the top of the list, right? So it's super, super um, important that, in, again, in your profile or your bio, whatever, depending on which social media site you're on, that you have that information. Because there are people specifically looking for a planet marketing rep because they want to become an IntelliTravel travel advisor. Do you realize that? Because somebody reached out to them months ago or a year ago, they weren't ready. They said they weren't interested and that person never followed up with them and now they're ready. And they're like, dang, they didn't follow up with me. I don't know where I wrote their name or whatever or their contact information. I don't remember what it is. And so they'll go searching on Facebook or Instagram, hashtag planet marketing. But if you don't have it in your bio, whatever, you're not gonna pop up. Hashtag I and teletravel. I have a question. So can we mix putting even though like our profile, like my profile name says my name and then it says my travel agency, but can I put planet marketing someplace there? Like yes. how, where can I do you that? put like, it in the, in the work section? that you are group. a planet marketing rep and then you're also a IntelliTravel travel advisor. Okay. No different than you were if you work two jobs, right? Ms. Delta, I see your hand up. Yes, I, um, I'm, it, you got my mind just working overtime here with that and I appreciate it because I think on my Instagram, I do have contact information. I never thought, and when I was doing my profile for Facebook, they give you, you know, you can only put in so many characters and it's shortened. If you don't mind, would you take a look at mine and see? Yeah, private message me afterwards. Um, oh, okay. And I can do that. Uh, okay, because um, I, I, whatever I need to do to, and, and I, if I sit and think about it, I'm like, okay, well, not getting any responses. I wonder why I didn't have any information to get in contact with me. So yeah, exactly. I would definitely get that to go in and just just kind of you know revamp and and put in 
the necessity of, of the information. Correct. Also, I want you all to please review your profile picture. Is it a high quality, crisp picture, headshot, professional picture of you? Nope. Or is it you sitting in a car taking a selfie? Unprofessional. <laughs> I see it all the time. Is it you standing somewhere where the background doesn't look, what's the word? Uh, doesn't have any symmetry. Is it a picture of you and your children? That should not be your profile pic. You and your husband shouldn't be your profile pic. It should be a professional headshot of you. When I say professional, do I mean you got to go spend money and have a photographer or go to a studio? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying use your cell phone or your iPad, whatever. Get all cute. Ladies, put some lipstick on, put some earrings on. Fellas, wear a button-down shirt with a collar. Something with a collar would be nice. And either stand behind a blank wall. But I don't want to see behind the wall. It's like part of a wall, part of a door. Uh, you know, the refrigerator's behind you. Or I can see your bed frame behind you. I see other people in the picture in the background. That's not professional. And I'm telling you all of these things because there's 95,000 of us. What's going to separate you from the 95,000? And sometimes it's just the picture that will make people choose you over someone else. But if your picture looks blurry or it's an old picture, that's another thing. Old pictures. Stop it with the old pictures. I know, I know, I hear what you're saying, Tanisha, but I, I was the I was the bomb 10 years ago. I look really good at that wedding. And you still using that wedding picture from when you were a guest at someone's wedding because your hair was done, you paid for somebody to do your makeup, but you look nothing like that now. Embrace your who you are today. Because guess what? You ain't walking down the street with a bag over your head. We see you. You can't hide what you look like today. Be comfortable in your own skin. No, we don't want no throwback pictures, Lorna. Don't be using the throwback pictures as your profile pic. If you want to do that as a post then and now for some engagement, that's one thing. But seriously, who you are now is who you are. Embrace it. Okay? Number three, consistent branding. Consistent branding. Establish a consistent and visually appealing branding across your social media platforms. Use professional graphics, color schemes, and fonts that align with your network marketing business and the travel industry. So I know a lot of you, how many of you have a logo for your travel agency? Good, good. If you don't have a logo, I suggest you get one made. And no, you don't have to pay somebody to do it. You can go on Canva and they have templates for logos. So you can start there. I created my own logo through Canva. So if you have a logo, so for those of you who have logos, let's go to Trey. Trey, where are you using your logos? How do you use your logo? And I think you told me you were at work. So you could type it. Kim Sykes, how are you using your logo? Are you at work too? Martina, how are you using your logo? 
I'm sorry, Director Burke, oh, I okay, typed it in go. the chat, but yes, ma'am, I am at work, but on my travel flyers that I create in Canva, okay. I'll have my logo on there or any, oh, and on HubSpot, I use it there as well. Okay, all right. Anybody else, tell me how you are using your logo. I usually just use it on my correspondence, like letters uh, to clients and uh, about their about their travel. Um, I do use it on the brochures for my honeymoon wishes that I do that I sponsor. I mean, uh, promote. But I I don't lose it on social media. I think that's where you're leading to, alluding to. <laughs> Should I be? There's so many places that you can use your logo outside of uh, your correspondence and flyers and itineraries. How about your email signature? Would you say, Jean, you're on mute? Jean, you're on mute. There can you, you hear me? Oh, yeah. okay. No, I have um, my own shirts. I have my logo on my my t-shirts, my, um, what do you call those, with the collar. I, I'm branded all the way. My daughter helped me. Mm -hmm. It's on my uh, signature when I send something off. Um, I mean, it's important. And I knew that going in. I probably spent a whole lot of time branding myself before I started anything else and so I'm slowly now learning to do a whole lot so my mind and, and, and ears are open to whatever you have for us and I appreciate you. How many of you are using creating reels and videos? Just type me in the chat. Are you creating reels? and videos and shorts. A lot of you, that's a place for you to use your logo. Are we not in a video world where video dominates everything? Anybody ever be up all night and you just watching video after video after video after video? That is the perfect place for you to start um, using your logo. Let me give you an example. So when I was in Mexico, they had this performance, but notice I got my logo, Lux Platinum Travel LLC. And it just stays there throughout the entire video, right? Um, if you're doing a tour, let's say you stay somewhere. I don't care if it's the Marriott down the street from you and you take a bunch of pictures, let's say you get, you know, 12 pictures of the room, right? Well, you, you know, you can create a video with just the pictures, right? Add your logo to it. So now that video has your logo. So any type of media that you put out, you make sure you have your logo on it. That is how you brand yourself. If you're only using it for correspondence, then it's only the people who are already utilizing your services. But you want the people who haven't utilized your services to start seeing your logo everywhere. And that's going to make them say, oh, you know what? I want to let me let me reach out to them because they're everywhere. I see that logo everywhere. Delta. I um, it's a app. That's called, oh, let me see. I'm sorry. It is, it's called Crafto. And I was just messing around with it. And it said something about, you know, creating your logo and things like that. So I did um, my name in it. You can do um, affirmations and all of that. I uh, did the, the logo. Uh, I think it's like a circle with, with a letter D in it and with the name of, uh, of my uh, travel agent. With I, I I can I'll send that to you and you can just like give me your critique on whether it's you know something you know that's okay or not or what I need to do you know keep it or lose it and do something different because I mean everything that I need to do to amp up you know my business 
that's what I that's what I uh, I want to do. But I wow. I will connect with and send okay. you that information. Yep. All right. That's fine, uh, Delta. Templi, if you look at the bottom row, this okay, folks, see that. this app right here, Templi, T E M P L Y, is what I have been using to make videos and adding my logo to it. So if you go to projects like this one, I did a room tour. And when you click on graphics, here is where you can add a logo or a file or whatever you're going to use. So again, use something like Canva or whatever. Uh, make sure you're using a PNG type file. This way it's kind of see through and it'll sit over. Um, and that's where I have my logo. So any video, I first upload the video or the pictures, right? to create the video, and then I'm gonna add my logo onto it. You could also, um, you know, add wording to it. So for like this one that I did, uh, El Dorado Casitas, right? So I have that, I forgot to add my logo to this one. I don't think I even posted this, but I have the El Dorado Casitas name over it and then I can add my logo. Let's say I wanted to add my logo because for some reason I didn't add it on that one. But add your logo to everything, okay? Add your logo to everything. Don't miss out on the opportunity to brand your business. Lakeisha? Hey, Director Burke. Um, question with the logo, is it, do we need to like revamp it, uh, like maybe revamp our logo so they're clear or by us saving in the PNG style, is it transparent? Because I know like mine mostly comes up, it's just, you know, solid color logo. I think it, so I don't, I don't know. Take it away. I upload it to Canva and then yeah. click export as PNG and see if it makes it translucent or not. Or you might just need to do a translucent version of it. I think it depends on the logo. I don't know. Okay. Well, I got mine off of fiber, so I think he gave me all of those. Yeah, if not, you could go Price back to him and say, hey, can you make. Um, can you or create or give me the version, a PNG version, so that I can use this for branding on other things? Yeah, so it kind of just depends on what your logo looks like. Any other questions about this? Got some ideas of how to use your logo more? Yes, your business cards should have your logo on it, your email, your itineraries your videos, your photos. Yes, even your photos. Don't let other people steal your photos. Put your brand, your watermark on it. It becomes a watermark. That's another word for it. All right. And if you go through Canva to create your logo, you can choose color schemes so that these are your official colors for your brand. So that when you're making t-shirts and stuff like that, you're using the exact same colors from your brand that are associated with your brand. Okay, number four, engaging content. Engaging content. Create valuable, engaging, and relevant content for your audience. Share travel tips, destination highlights, success stories, and motivational posts that resonate with your individuals seeking personal time and financial freedom. Very simple to know how to do engaging content with travel, right? But what about your planet marketing business? We want to remember the first slide of our um, presentation is design your ideal life through personal time and financial freedom. And we wanna attract, if you wanna find business partners, you gotta find people who want financial, personal, and time freedom. 
you got to find those people who also desire to leave a legacy for their family. So you want to create posts that are going to resonate with those people so that you attract those people. Is Lanise on here? She's not on here. But Lanise Martin, what attracted her to me was that I was talking about six figures residually. It wasn't the travel stuff that attracted her to me. It was the six figure residual income that attracted her to me. So you want to make sure that your your posts are going to are going to resonate with whoever your target audience is. Number five, be authentic. Oh, let me go back to number four. Here's a great place to use AI. You want to create engaging posts, use AI to do that. Right? So let me, I'm going to share my screen. Create a post, 200 words or less about a luxury experience at the um, World Marriott Resort. Indulge in a world-class luxury experience at the World Marriott Resort, where opulence and relaxation seamlessly blend to create an unforgettable stay. From the moment you arrive, you'll be greeted by a team of attentive staff dedicated to exceeding your every expectation. Step into your lavishly appointed suite adorned with elegant furnishings and breathtaking views of the surrounding landscapes. Sink into a plush king-size bed dressed in the finest linens, ensuring a restful night's sleep. The spacious marble bathroom awaits, complete with a deep soaking tub. Y'all get the point? Could I write something like that? Yeah, but it ain't gonna be that good. <laughs> it's not gonna be that good. There's probably some words in there, like I probably wouldn't have thought of lavishly, right? Or opulent, right? Attentive, yeah, there, there's some words there I would use, but there's a lot of words there that I wouldn't use. And and it's general enough, right, that that could be any hotel that has suites, right? So don't just take everything that AI is going to give you something, but you need to read it and edit as necessary, right? Because I did something, I did one, and uh, there were some words or uh, they describe the location saying that there was a fireplace and there wasn't. So I had to take that out, right? Because if it's not true, don't say it, <laughs> okay? But that's a great way. And you can do the same thing with asking it to create, um, you know, a post to attract um, business partners as well, right? Looking for time, freedom, personal freedom. The more information you get it, you give it, the more um, clear of a message it's going to send. That's going to be very specific and you'll have to do less editing. All right. Okay. So moving on. Number five, be authentic. Be yourself and showcase your genuine passion for the travel industry and helping others build a sustainable residual income for their family. Share personal experiences challenges and successes to build trust and credibility with your audience. 
go ahead and you see someone hit goal builder, reach out to them and do a little interview with them so that they can share their story and then market that on your social media. Right, same thing when people join the business. Share, copy and paste that announcement of a new business partner joining because it's sharing their background. You know, where they're from, their background, why they got started. All of that attracts other people to the business. Number six, utilize visual content. Utilize visual content. Incorporate high quality images and videos to capture attention and showcase the beauty of travel destinations and living an elevated lifestyle. Utilize platforms like Instagram and YouTube to visually engage your audience effectively. I could tell you on YouTube, I'm following a lot of the major suppliers that I book with right? Royal Caribbean, that's like my favorite cruise line. So when I'm putting together a proposal, whether it be a proposal for a client, or I might be putting together my own group trip, I'm pulling videos from Royal Caribbean's YouTube page, their blog. And I include it. So let me... I'm gonna do a another quick share just so that I can, uh, you know what? I think I archived the one that I wanted to show you, but I can unarchive it. Okay, so let me share my screen and show you what I'm referring to. Now I use Travel Joy. Um, so I don't know whatever it is that you're using, but let's take this one, for example, um, I did a smart proposal, a group proposal for a client. So right here. Um, this one was for Independence of the Seas, going to Labadee. And so I just went to the Royal Caribbean YouTube channel. Um, they have a blog. And so here's a tour of the ship. Here's a tour of Labadee Island that they would go to. And then I just found these two, you know, do you need a passport um, for a cruise, ultimate cruise packing list? Right, but these are high quality videos. All the information is there. Um, and so I use that. You could take those same videos and post it in your travel group along with information about, uh, you know, a cruise special or destination or something like that. Okay. Um, number seven. Provide value, provide value. Offer free resources, informative blog posts, or downloadable guides related to the travel industry or your business. Position yourself as a knowledgeable resource and expert in your field. So you have to, if your travel group is all about Book this trip, 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 book that trip, book this trip. It's boring. It's boring. You got to give some value, be informative. How about teaching people how to pack for Europe, which is totally different than packing for a Caribbean vacation? There's videos and information on that. You can just Google it or how about ask AI? How do you pack for a trip to Europe? It's going to tell you, right? How about, you know, the steps you need to take to, how about doing a post about TSA pre-check versus global entry? There's some people that don't know the difference between the two. So how about doing a post about that and educating your group, your community? 
And then how about providing the steps on what it takes to get your global entry or your TSA pre-check, the cost, the website links. That's a valuable resource. Okay. Be the expert. Number eight, use testimonials and success stories. Highlight success stories from individuals who have achieved personal freedom, financial freedom, and time freedom through network marketing in the travel industry. Encourage satisfied customers and team members to share their experiences. This is a perfect, with convention coming up, you should be able to easily, I, I would challenge each of you to get at least 10 videos of you asking people to introduce themselves and tell them why Planet Marketing and what the business has done for them. Why did they choose Planet Marketing and what has the business done for them? And make these each individual interviews. Quick, short, two, three minutes. Another great question, interview question to ask people at convention is, what was the reason you said yes to Planet Marketing, but what keeps you in Planet Marketing? Because a lot of times the reason why people join the business is one thing, and then once they get in and see it, the reason why they stay is something different. Right? Another good question to ask people is about the support, the leadership, the training. Right? What can they share about the training that people will get when they join Planet Marketing? All right, number nine, engage and respond. This is a big one, engage and respond. Actively engage with your audience by responding to comments, direct messages, and inquiries promptly. Put that in caps, promptly. Foster a sense of community and make individuals feel valued for reaching out. Some of you, You'll do a post in the morning and you'll put a call to action. And there's a ton of people saying stuff, you know, responding and you're not even responding back to them. And if you do, it's like the next day or something. Now, granted, I, I had a challenge with that while I was in Mexico, right? Because I had someone, I did a good morning post or whatever, but then I was in classes. So all those, it was like a day later before I was able to go back to say good morning to the people who said good morning to me the day before, but I responded. Some of you are just letting these comments go and you're not giving any type of response and you're killing your algorithm. So it is important. Every single time someone comments on your post, do some type of response. You got to respond back to them. You got to engage with them. Number 10, call to action, call to action. A lot of you are missing this. I see it on your Facebook. Include clear and compelling calls to action in your posts, inviting interested individuals to join your network marketing business. Direct them to a landing page, a webinar or contact form where they can learn more about the opportunity. Remember, building a professional social media presence takes time and consistent, keyword, consistent effort. Stay focused on your target audience's needs, provide valuable content, and engage authentically to attract individuals interested in the network marketing business in the travel industry. But that call to action is, is, is important. I think a lot of times what I see is missed opportunities for you to go deeper in your posts and to put a call to action. For example, you're at a weekly meeting. You take a picture with Mr. Moore 
and all you're doing is posting the picture of you with Mr. Moore. That's a missed opportunity. That was an opportunity for you to share that he is retired millionaire, single dad, and is now, you know, the number two income earner in our company. That he went from military to millionaire, and he's one of your coaches in the business. And that if somebody wants to join a business where they're going to have support and have access to millionaire mentors to private message you for more information. No, y'all ain't putting that post out there. Y'all just posting a picture of you and Mr. Moore cheesing. Missed opportunity. Share his story. Share his testimony. Don't just take pictures with people and not share anything about them. Because you posting a picture with Mr. Moore and your community have no idea who he is. For all they know, that's your daddy. That's your uncle. That's your cousin. Why are you just posting the picture with nothing, no type of context of what it is, where you are? You could be saying, I'm at our weekly meeting where guests get to come and learn about this, our amazing business opportunity. We're here every second Thursday of the month. Meet my millionaire mentor, you know, Mr. Orlando Moore, retired military, single dad, went from military to mil. When you partner with me, you're going to have access to him. Private message me for more information. Right? So let's take everything to the next level. Okay, takeaways. We got three minutes. Give me one takeaway that you got from today's session. Who wants to go first? Put my logo on everything. Everything. Good, good Kim. Good, good. Anybody else? I was Engage thinking. Uh oh. Christina? Sorry, yes. Um, I have not created a logo. I got a logo um, for my business card, but I am going to create one to put on pictures, and I have not done that. And I'm also going to look into Travel Joy. <laughs> Good, yes. Yeah. So I have a team with Travel Joy. Travel Joy is normally, well, let me say this. Yes, I have Travel Joy. Yes, you can jo join my Travel Joy team and have access to any forms and templates that I have created and you pay only $10 a month. However, IntelliTravel now has IntelliSpark, which is their version of Travel Joy. And it's a lot cheaper than the $10. I think it's only $7.99 or something like that a month. So you might wanna go and check that out. Um, I haven't used it yet, so I can't say, but if anybody wants to join my Travel Joy team, you need to contact your director let them know you want to join my travel joy team and provide them with your name and your email address please do not reach out to me individually talking about you want to join my travel. it's just too much i'd rather you reach out to your director because they periodically will give me a list of their downline who wants to be a part of my travel joy and that just works better for me than having uh just random people reaching out but that's good lakeisha um, you um, my biggest, one of my takeaways, my main one is um, definitely stop missing the opportunities and utilizing the content that, that I do have and not just like you said, don't post that picture of me and so and so when we go to the convention, you use that, their story. Exactly. Stories sell, facts tell. Stories sell, facts tell. And Director Burke, one more thing, if you don't mind, because what you said about the challenges and sharing that, that just was like, okay, it's okay. Because, you know, I wasn't able to fly to convention, but it's my story, it's my challenge, and I'm still going to get there, so share it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, Ortasia? Yes, Um. so my takeaway is basically to interview people you know um i'm definitely accepting the challenge to interview people why plan it what's keeping them there also um miss choice said 
when she has she branded and you know have her own logos on her shirts and hats I like that that's a nice idea and then I'm I've been having a lot of aha moments I don't know if it's just because convention <laughs> convention time here so I'm like okay I'm super excited and um so I'm having a lot, like I said, I'm having a lot of aha moments and I really, I'm realizing just how much we got a lot of, we got a lot of gems here. So in this business and a lot of access to um, things that I, I would normally be like, how in the world would I, how am I supposed to know that? This is my first business. And it's like, here you go. And it's like, for real, it's right there. And so it's, it's the aha moment for me, but um it's, I got a lot of, a lot more, but that's just a few of them that I'm going to take, I'll take away today. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Miss Jean. I, I am excited about the homework, believe it or not, the uh, testimonials or feedback and, and actually getting a little footage um, of those that are there that may win awards there. I mean, it's going to blow up. I was there last year, first time. So I'm looking so forward to doing the homework and utilizing it. I love it. I love it. Good job. Good job. Um, hey, Ann Sinclair. Hey, Ann, we can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I go. went in the basement. Um, the AI, um, that's a good point to take away to use it and use it wisely. And um, I have a question. So um, with Brandon and yourself, I did that when I started. And then now I found that the name that I tr use, I can no longer use it be because something about the name is too long for LLC. So I will recommend that you guys check in your state to see if your name is taken before you try to put it on everything because then you might when you're ready to legalize your business like get an llc or a dba your name might be taken ah that is a great great tip yes if you think at any point you are going to create an llc definitely uh do that before creating the logo and putting it everywhere because if that name is already taken in your state, you can't use it. So thank you, Kayan, for sharing that tip. That is very, very important to know. Shamika. You're welcome. Um, well, my biggest takeaway um, was to lever uh, no, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> I got a whole bunch of notes. <laughs> Um, but define your target audience for both your travel and your marketing business that tailors the needs, desires, and the pain points um, to your people. So, you know, it's better attracting your post and your content. It should all be tailored around your target audience. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that as well as your, not just your marketing, it's your travel business as well. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I love about all these tips because they're relevant to both sides of our business. So if you're just focusing on the travel, this is relevant to that side. If you're focused on just the marketing, it's relevant to that side as well. Ms. Delta? My my takeaway is, is so much and I, I'm just bowled over with joy that I get a chance to revamp myself and go in and redo some things as I, as I learn it, it it allows me a chance and an opportunity to rebuild so now even i mean just for me something as simple as as your bio on your facebook page your logo and things like that it's like now like you said it's a business set it up as a business treat it as a business and you you want people to to look at it as a business so it gives me the opportunity to go back in and, and just revamp everything and just, you know, come, come back anew and fresh all over again. So that that's what my, my whole mindset is. And I, I, I say every week I say, thank you, but thank you. You're welcome, Miss Delta. Sharice. 
my takeaway is not to miss these meetings, even the recordings, because <laughs> you never know what gems is going to be shared. I didn't mean to laugh at you, Sharice. That's so that that's good though. That was funny. That's real. That's real talk. People be asking like, "Well, how you know this and how you know that?" But if they get plugged in, like, like you, you're not my director, but you know, we on the same team and this information that you sharing will help me and it's going to help my team. And so, some of my team members are here, but this is just one part of the leverage that I love about this. This is what I really, really love. So I'm just saying thank you for this uh, platform because this is helpful to everyone. Absolutely. Thank you, Sharice. And last comment, Shamika. I just wanted to say a lot of people are asking about the chat GPT and um, this recording is on your YouTube channel. I put um, the link to it in the chat. Yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, so two things. Um, number one, the way that you all can show your appreciation for this content and to help me out is to go to my YouTube channel, like this video, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel and share this video. If you have a, a messenger chat with your team, share the YouTube link in your team chat so that the people who work and can't get to this, they can they still have access to it, right? Share it to your team group. If you have a group, share it to the team group. If you know people who are struggling with their social media, share this video, say, hey, here's some tips that'll help you. That will help me immensely. And then, um everybody stay on for one second thank you all for joining us today <laughs>